Hey everyone, today I just want to give out some details for those who wish to join us for Sukkot this fall in 2020. Shalom everybody and welcome to Beit Tefillah. I wanted to get out a video about our Sukkot gathering this fall in Mena, Arkansas. Time goes by fast and it's going to be here before we know it. I've had a lot of people asking questions lately about the details for this so they can make their plans to join us this fall. So I figured that I should make a video giving everybody the details. Sukkot, also known as the Feast of Tabernacles, as we are observing it, or as we have calculated it, runs this year from sunset October 2nd to sunset October 9th, which is when Shemini Atzeret starts. In both the first day Sukkot and Shemini Atzeret are high Sabbaths, and they occur at the same time the weekly Sabbaths do during the Feast of Sukkot. So we're going to be checking out on the first day of the week, Sunday on the 10th of October. This graphic here is how we figured the dates for the feast days this year. And if this doesn't fit when you keep them, then by all means, do your own thing according to your own calculations. The first thing I want to mention is that we, or Beit Tefillah, are not hosting Sukkot. We are simply camping here and meeting with other people that would like to have some fellowship with us for Sukkot. We're not hosting it. I also need to mention that this is a non-Messianic group that only follows the Tanakh. So if someone in your family wants to come along and they're a Christian and they're believing in or following a New Testament Messiah, they're welcome to come as long as they understand this up front and they won't have any issues with people discussing things that might unintentionally upset them. Families are welcome, kids are welcome, singles are welcome, pets are welcome, but you got to keep the pets on a leash and they need to be quiet at night so they don't keep up other campers at night because there's not a whole lot of sound protection in tents and if somebody brought a dog that was yapping half the night it wouldn't be a very restful time okay so uh, please make sure if you bring a pet that it's quiet we are not providing drinks or meals there's no drinks or food available at the campsite itself whatever you're going to be drinking or eating you need to bring in yourself uh, we're also not having any scheduled speakers. This is just a very informal gathering where we can sit around and talk Torah, grill some food together, sit around a campfire at night. We can ask questions and figure some things out together or share our stories. Just be together like a big family. People, of course, are free to explore the area and do whatever they'd like to do. We're keeping it loose, relaxed, and friendly. Just a great time gathering with others who are Yisrael. We have some people joining us from all over the world, and it will be wonderful to finally meet people that we have only seen on Facebook or on YouTube. And we're going to be meeting at a campground just east of Mena, Arkansas. This is in western Arkansas, and the small city of Mena is about a half hour drive from Oklahoma, so that gives you an idea of just how far west we are in the state. This campground is privately owned, and it's called Renegade Ranch. It's off of Highway 88 East, about a five-minute drive from Mena, and out in the country. It's right on the river for canoeing, kayaking, swimming, fishing, etc. We're surrounded by the Washita National Forest. It's just very beautiful here. Okay, we are not charging anyone for anything. Okay, we're not making any money off of this. There's no registration fees. There's nothing. Everyone has to pay to use the campground, as we do as well. We all have to pay our own way there. There's a few rental cabins on site, although I think they may all be booked by now. And there's some RV or camper slips with full hookups, and including, you know, they have a big loop turnaround. So if you have a big giant RV, you can make the turn. Uh, full hookups there, but there's not a lot of them, and they're going to go quickly. So if you're going to need a slip for your RV or your camper, you need to call and get it reserved, okay? There's plenty of places to set up tents. I mean, you get what, hundreds of tents here, easy. Uh, you can have them in groups or possibly even an isolated campsite if that's what you desire. And they have a brand new bathhouse that was recently constructed. So for those who are in tents, uh, there's a great place with toilet facilities and, and nice big showers. And I believe they're even handicap accessible. You can get a wheelchair in there, I think. And uh, the owners of the campground told me that if they have a lot of people coming a lot more uh, than she's used to, that they're going to get some porta potties there. So... Uh, It'll be good. But uh, I'm going to put a link to the campground's website below in the description. And the website has their numbers and contact information on it, of course. But there's also other tabs on the website where you can see everything that this campground has to offer, like some of the activities there. So just to repeat, you don't send us 
anything, okay? You reserve your campsite and make payment arrangements with the campground and let us know you're coming. That's it. We are commanded to dwell in a sukkah, which is a temporary dwelling during the week-long Feast of Sukkot. And for people that cannot physically stay in a tent every night for a week, like me, a hotel room is a temporary dwelling. And I know some people are going to argue that fact and say, oh, well, we're supposed to build it or it's got to be a tent or whatever. You know what? There's a lot of people who are, are handicapped, a lot of people who are elderly that want to gather for Sukkot, but they can't stay in a tent. They can't, they can't do that. So, you know... A hotel room is a temporary dwelling. And having said that, Mina has a couple of nice hotels, and one of the better ones is called the Sun Country Inn, which is a straight shot down the road from the campground, and it's only about five minutes away. This is a terrible picture I have of it, but it was raining yesterday. My, my wife and I were in town, and we took a... Never mind. It's just go to the website. they got better pictures there. But I'm going to put their info below in the description. There's another hotel. It's just a little bit cheaper and just almost across the street down the road a little bit. It's not as nice, but it's a little bit cheaper. And that place is called the Lime Tree Inn. And I'm going to add a link to that one below as well. So if you want to stay at a hotel in Mina, you can do that. And then simply just drive over to the campsite during the day to join the rest of us. Feel free to bring your grill and your coffee pot as well. Bring your cooler to have your food and drinks with you. And bring some lawn chairs, folding chairs, or something to sit on. Remember, this is a heavily wooded area where this campground is, so you may want to bring bug spray if you need it. We're not known to have a bad mosquito problem here, especially in October. I mean, mosquitoes usually get worse around June, July, and August, but October they start, you know, to die back a little bit. And uh, But still, you may want to bring some, or you can pick some up in town if you're like me and forget half the stuff you need. So there's a nice pavilion there for us to sit under and talk keep us out of the sun keep us out of the rain we can study we can whatever you know just gather under there but we need to make sure everyone has something to sit on we can come up with a few extra chairs but not many bring your bible or your laptop especially if your bible's on your laptop like mine is uh, there's electric there at the pavilion we're going to bring some power strips but you might want to also bring a small extension cord so you can have your laptop plugged in or even if you just need to charge your phone if you're staying in a tent and you don't have electric like we do in the rooms or in the trailer slips okay we also have a couple of grocery stores in town uh, one of them is a super walmart so you should have everything you need if you don't want to eat at a restaurant for every meal well you can make sandwiches or you can you know throw something on the grill or bring snacks or whatever keep them in your cooler we have your regular basic fast food restaurants in town like subway mcdonald's pizza hut and all that but there's also some very good restaurants in town we have a lot of fine dining here we just got a new sushi place to open up and that place is packed everybody loves it there's also some nice coffee shops in town for those who may want to grab a cup of gourmet coffee when you're running around and there are some great antique shops some great ones there a lot of other unique stores as well our son has the only computer sales and repair shop in mina and our daughter-in-law his wife has the only bookstore so if you need any computers that need fixing or you need to get a book they're there if you need them mina has a population of just under six thousand people so it's not too big it's not too small it's just about right and it's very safe here there are some great things to do in the area as well right at renegade ranch there are four wheeler trails in a field where you can search for native american artifacts they keep the field plowed so people can walk along and simply look for them or you can dig for them as well there's an additional small fee for those who want to do this it's pretty cheap and uh, i've done quite well there over the years digging for arrowheads and had a really good time very close by is a new zip line place. This is supposed to be a lot of fun, but it's almost right across the road from the campground. It's nice. Uh, I'm going to put a link below in the description for more information on that. That may be something that, you know, families can do with kids. It's very safe. It's inspected. You go through like this training class I hear. I haven't done it, but uh, anyway, you can watch videos. You find them online. It's supposed to be a lot of fun. About a 20 minute drive from the campground is a couple of places that rent canoes or kayaks for those who wish to do floats or paddles down the beautiful Washita River. We've done this a few times and it's absolutely wonderful. What you do is you go to this place and you pick out, you know, kayaks or canoes, whatever you want, and they take you and drop you off upriver and there's different, you know, distances and times of floats. There's like a two mile, four mile, six or eight, and you just simply float your way back to, uh, 
the pickup point, call them on your cell phone, and they come right over and get you. It takes about five minutes for them to come pick you up, and they take you back to their place, right to your vehicle, and then you head back. It's a lot of fun, and it's beautiful. Bring your camera if you're going to do something like that. Another popular spot to go is on top of Rich Mountain, which is just west of Mina. They have an old lodge up there that was recently remodeled that has a glorious view from the top of the mountain down into the valleys. There's a good restaurant up there, a nice hotel and a gift shop, plus hiking trails as well. That's probably about a 45-minute drive from the campground, so it's not too far away. We get a lot of tourists here, and a lot of them come for the beautiful fall color. This area is very popular for that. Now, this... Uh, this, this beautiful place on top of the mountain looks down on Lake Wilhelmina, which is another camping area, and it's very popular with local fishermen. All of this is surrounded by the Washita National Forest. And that's about it. I hope I thought of everything. I probably didn't. But anyway, um, like I mentioned earlier, if you do reserve a spot at the campground or you make a reservation at a local hotel, please let us know so we can get a rough idea of just how many people we can expect to attend Sukkot here this fall. If you have any questions, please post them below. Thanks for watching, everyone, and we hope to see a lot of you here in October. Shalom for now.